Good evening, everybody. The meeting will come to order. Let the roll call show that we are down one member this evening. Mrs. Rutkowski is out sick. Uh, the first item here is approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion? I move that we approve the agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? No, the motion passes. Now for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Sharnow, will you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We now have approval of minutes for August 10th, 2022. That was a business meeting. And then also our August 24th, 2022 work study session. I will go ahead and make the motion that we approve the minutes as presented. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? That motion carries. We move on to informational reports, starting with a summary of current events from Superintendent Jagodinsky. Thank you, Madam President, members of the board, and guests. It's exciting to see all of you here tonight. We're starting a new tradition of uh, making sure that at every meeting we're celebrating the excellence in our district, so we're going to get to that soon. Um, some of my comments, what we've been working on is I was very lucky today to spend the entire day at McDowell Mountain Elementary School, and it brought back a lot of great memories as a parent there. I had three kids go through the school, and um, I was very thankful to Mr. Wilkinson for allowing me to come down, and uh, I just took the, the day to have teachers come by, share feedback, um, share what they'd like to see me work on as, as we get through this first year. Uh, it was great to, to meet with them, meet a lot of new people, see some old faces that I've known for a long time that have been doing some great things over there. So it was great, and I was able to also join their faculty meeting. We talked about um, uh, consolidation a little bit. We talked about Beyond Textbooks, and uh, it was just a really good experience. I also, in the last month, have spent a day at the high school, and I also spent a full day at the middle school. And, so now that I've, I've spent an day at each site, I've gathered all that feedback, and that'll be part of our uh, my goals moving forward to meet the needs of our staff. So it was very great to do that. Uh, last week, I attended the law conference, which was uh, again um, a good experience for me. It was a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity for me to meet other superintendents, spend time. Um, there was a point where, since I was by myself as a small district, at lunch by myself at the table and. It was a little little time went by before anyone else sat there, so it was a little it was a little nerve wracking, but we got through it. Um, but I had a lot of got a lot of good information. Shared that out with our principals at our principal meeting on Monday. Uh, our strategic plan committee is coming along well. We've reached out to the community, to uh, our staff, and uh, we had our first student advisory board meeting, which was great. And uh, having the the high school students. Uh, just share with me things that they're they're excited about, and there will be a part of that strategic planning committee as well. So we're gonna we're through the planning phase, and now it's on to uh, implementation and start going through that process. So that'll be uh, something we'll be working on in the next month. I want to give uh, a shout out to Kaylee uh, and Alicia, both in our district office. Uh, Kaylee's our HR coordinator. Alicia's in payroll. They've been working extremely hard to build an employee portal. So now all of our employees have a place to go where they can check uh, all their, um, their check stubs, their certificate data, time off requests, EPARs, and HR announcements. So it was really refreshing to see all that hard work come out. And uh, now teachers and staff have a, a place to go to, to get uh, pertinent information. Uh, PBIS is rolling in all of our sites, and um, they're all using it for data collection now for major and minor infractions, so we can start to plan uh, interventions to prevent those types of issues. And we're seeing school stores now opening back up. The middle school opened their store, and uh, the high school is in conversation with parents who used to run the store, and some of you I remember doing that. Uh, we're going to be bringing that back, and students will be able to pay for items either with uh, cash or with PBIS points. So 
Uh, we're excited about that coming up soon. Uh, all sites are now uh, following the, the, the coffee model that I, I, I did years ago. And so now we have um, uh, coffee with, with Mr. Hartman, with Dr. Wheel Dryer, and lattes with Latona <laughs> and Wilkinson. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, That's really Krista, I came in the first day of my event. Sorry to cut you off, Dr. Jenkins. Krista says, when is your coffee with Kevin? I was like, dang it. <laughs> like, coffee with Kevin, That's, uh, obviously, it's phonetically okay. So, uh, you know, they got past me. So, we were like, Well, we're excited because it gives our community an opportunity to share feedback, which we're really, we're really big on, uh, solve problems, and also make new friends. It's a great opportunity to meet people in the community, and uh, now that all three sites are doing it, and the superintendent, I do mine every three weeks as well, um, you have a lot of access to us, a lot of information uh, to, to get. So, uh, we have homecoming week next week, which is always an exciting week for high school. And we start on Wednesday. Uh, we have a couple of events. We have our powder puff game on Wednesday. Uh, the movie on the field, which is, is great to, to bring. We, we've done that in the past. So my only advice is don't allow candy on the field, which I learned uh, not to do that uh, as principal. But uh, movie on the field. Uh, Thursday, we have a pep assembly. And then Friday, we have the parade and the football game. So we're very excited. And then Saturday night is the big dance. So whole week of celebrating the Fountain Hills Falcons. Uh, and then, like I said, tonight we're starting a new tradition of bringing in a staff member and a student uh, from each site to celebrate excellence and the great things that they do. Uh, I've always felt that that's something um, that's important as we're trying to build a positive climate here in, in Fountain Hills is to have as many people as possible be recognized for all the great things they do in our district. So I'm very excited about that. And then last, uh, we had an amazing cross-country meet, and I just again want to thank uh, Mary McDonald uh, and, and her team, and Kevin Clancy's here tonight, uh, and, and, and his team. Uh, Dr. Wheel Dryer, also a former cross-country coach, was out there with uh, Amanda Baca driving around. Uh, I was out there first thing in the morning, and it was just excellent to see. I mean, it's, it's a huge event. If, if, if you haven't been to it, uh, the amount of volunteers that we get, I'm just amazed at how many volunteers we get to be out there. And uh, we have a little video that was made for us and shared with us. We want to show you on uh, just how big of an event it was for our town.
It was just great to see all the schools, all the buses, just everybody out at our beautiful park participating. So again, congratulations to our cross country teams for putting on such an amazing event. And with that, that concludes my comments. Thank you. We now have governing board member comments. We'll start with you, Mr. Sell. Okay. Okay. Mrs. Reed. I have nothing. Football's been great. Uh, cheer team's been great. Fun squad. Um, band's been playing at the games. And thanks to everyone who volunteers to make that happen. It's it's quite a crew. The Booster Club and thanks to the Booster Club for also helping with. Um, I was not one of the people helping. So the, all the other people that helped with the cross country meet as well and the concession stand at the football games and the volleyball games. And for homecoming next week, thank you in advance to the PTO, to Stugo, and to Booster Club. That's all I have. Great. For myself, I was able to go to the um, last Coffee with Game, which um, if the crowd is that size again at the next meeting, you definitely can't hold it in that room anymore because um, uh, Chris had to drag in, I don't know, like 10 extra chairs from the, the lunchroom down there because there wasn't enough seats around the table in the conference room because there was a, a good group of people, lots of um, great questions and commentary from you know parents and community members who are all looking to support our school district, make it better, prom promote its existing successes and continue to grow uh, with additional success. So that was wonderful and I appreciate that you do that for the community, Dr. Jagazinzi, and also that all of the principals are doing that as well. All right, that concludes comments from the, or actually I should say that while Mrs. Rutkowski isn't here, um, she did let us know uh, that she went to the uh, law conference and she shared a summary of some of the um, different law cases that they um, reviewed and shared with the uh, individuals who participated there that helped provide some um, additional education to board members around, you know, previous cases uh, through the Supreme Court um, that impact our uh, school districts as a whole across the country. So, okay, we then move on to reports and we start with the presentation from the Fountain Hills Coalition. Well, uh, thank you everybody and thank you for the invitation to present before you. Uh, I'm Mike Sharno, I'm the director of the coalition and uh, I guess you're going to make the kids wait through all this, but that's okay. I'll uh, try to speed it up and uh, I guess I'll have to uh, maybe start a mocha with Mike. I, I don't know. But, uh, um, anyhow, uh, it's kind of nice to be on this side of the dais for one. And I just want to say thank you to all of you who served and are up there. And I know some of you are getting off, but the community does appreciate your service, so thank you for that. So, uh, to kick this off, uh, this is our original uh, mission. Uh, we've been in existence for 13 years. Uh, last year, we kind of did a rebranding of sorts and uh, added a name, Protect Our Youth. and. Uh, uh, the new mission statement is to achieve sustainable reductions in substance abuse among youth in Fountain Hills and the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. So we do have uh, board of directors and uh, sector leaders. I'll get into that a little bit uh, here quickly. And um, I wanted to introduce, uh, we just brought on two new people to the coalition part-time. So. They're both here tonight. So first one is Anita Sales. Stand up and say hi. She comes to us from uh, Fort McDowell and has a, a very uh, diverse and, and good background. Brings a lot of strong skill sets to us. So we look forward to uh, her involvement with us and continuing to collaborate with Fort McDowell. And the other part-time program manager we brought on, and I, 
no one here knows her, but I'll introduce her anyway. It's uh, Shonda Pua from here. So. And uh, I mentioned the sectors, and so we one of our unique characteristics is we bring together a lot of different people from the community, a lot of different leaders, uh, both from the treatment side, the faith community, obviously uh, all, the, all the school people, and uh, we've had through the 13 years we've been around, great cooperation from the district and the board, and so we appreciate all that as well. And we have our meetings back here at the Learning Center, went really well last week. And um, this is not a picture from Fountain Lake, um, but if it were, uh, how would we go about, you know, helping out the lake? I mean, we wouldn't just pick out one or two fish and, and try to work on them. We, we'd consider the whole lake. And that's how we look at the community of Fountain Hills. That uh, we try to look at Fountain Hills and Fort McDowell as uh, one community, and uh, we need to help and, and do what we can. So it's kind of a collaboration. Uh, we try to network more, just bring more of the leadership in, promote communication among residents, um, you know, leaders, citizens, that kind of thing raise public awareness about substance abuse, what's going on out there, what can we do to help prevent some of this stuff, and then of course a lot of education and training. Um, some of the things we do over the years, uh, different forums, town halls, we've had some of them here in this room, uh, work closely with the Fountain Hills Times, and of course you know we have a website and social media, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and we just try to get information out there, meet with people, and educate them. Um, we are a 501c3, and right now we're in uh, year one of our third federal grant, a drug-free communities grant. It's uh, run through the CDC at this point in time, but uh, we have gotten other grants, and of course there are some foundations and other groups that have given us uh, grants and donations over the years. And um, there's various ways we obtain our information. The main one is probably the Arizona Youth Survey, which the district has participated in for quite a number of years. And um, students just took, took the survey this last spring. So um, we try to just get a pulse of the community, find out what's going on from a law enforcement standpoint, and just what the trends are out there in the state and the uh, country. We just wrapped up this uh, survey. We uh, have an evaluator putting the results together, but uh, just to try to get a feel for what people think out there about the coalition, the community, what the issues are, uh, how much they know about us. That's just going to help us tailor uh, what we do in the future. Uh, this was from a survey, I think, five or six years ago, and it, it said that alcohol and substance abuse were the number one public health issue in town. And of course, uh, anxiety, stress, depression, and suicidal behavior weren't too far behind, and, and those are oftentimes kind of the underlying factors that lead to alcohol and substance abuse. So it is something that's out there, and people are aware of the issues, and uh, that's what we're trying to work on. Uh, this is uh, a graph showing some of the numbers from the Arizona Youth Survey over the years, and um, generally going down, obviously, and then the last figures were just from 2016 to 2018, but the brown line uh, going up pretty dramatically, that's e-cigarettes. So prior to 2016, you didn't really hear much about you know, vaping and e-cigarettes. It was all about tobacco and the, the regular kind of cigarettes. So, so that made us you know, kind of shift our focus a little bit and um, you know, just kind of retrench and, and put our uh, resources in different areas. So the general trend over, the, over those years has been downward with alcohol, cigarettes, marijuana, prescription drug abuse. But as you can see on the far right, uh, the e-cigarettes uh, jumped dramatically. So we did um, get a state grant three years ago I'll get into that a little bit later, but the main focus for that was was vaping, and um, with this new federal grant, the three substances we're focusing on are nicotine vaping, marijuana, and the concentrates, and the uh, opioids. 
And of course, alcohol and tobacco are always kind of on our radar as well. So overdoses are, are dramatically up this past year. So we try to focus, you know, within the school system on different initiatives that uh, reach the kids as well as the parents. These are just some examples of some of the things we are either currently doing or have done. And uh, this was a new uh, focus. We, we got some goggles this, uh, a couple of months ago, and so we, there was a team event at the community center, and um, the goggles kind of imitate the effects of uh, drunkenness. So we had the students do a matching game without the goggles. We time them, see how they do, and then have them put the goggles on and, and compare. We just try to talk to them about alcohol and driving and not getting in the car with someone who's been drinking and that kind of thing. I mentioned the state grant. That was a, a parents commission grant. Main focus was on vaping. Uh, we reached 1,500 students over the last three years, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, as well as freshmen, uh, various uh, curriculums to educate them on the health effects of vaping, uh, that kind of thing. We had 40 different awareness events, and uh, we had Cassie Rogers over at the middle school uh, help pay her salary in the last three years, and she did different groups with uh, at-risk kids and that kind of thing. It was really good. Uh, liaison for us and then of course newsletters and ads and emails and everything we call those indirect contacts but uh, trying to reach a lot of people uh, this past year we did introduce uh, Narcan in the community which can be used to reverse opioid overdoses I'll be talking about fentanyl a little bit but we have the prescription drug box over at Town Hall if people of unused or expired prescription drugs. We urge them to bring them to town hall in the lobby. Don't flush them down the toilet. Sanitary district doesn't like that. So, uh, fentanyl is here. There's been a lot of focus the past year on, on this chemical that's being introduced to a lot of different pills out there. Um, so we've been increasing our focus on awareness about that. These pills look normal, they look uh, legit, but uh, fentanyl is uh, you know, 50 times stronger than heroin and 100 times stronger than morphine, so it doesn't take much to, to uh, kill a person really. And the latest thing is the multicolored pills, they're not just the blue ones anymore, so uh, they're just trying to, cartels are trying to increase their market share and just by the blue pills have gotten a bad rap all of a sudden, so now they, they're making color ones. So we, uh, you know, don't be faked out. We just try to tell kids and parents, look, you know, you get a pill from somebody on the street, you don't know what's in it. So the message is one pill can, can kill. Uh, pills are easy to get. Uh, another message, parents, you know, there's a new drug dealer in town. It's, you know, your kid's cell phone. So. A lot, of, a lot of deals are being done over social media, and um, so we just try to work with parents, like, hey, uh, you know, monitor their social media, uh, see what they're doing out there, that kind of thing. So there's just a lot more things to worry about these days than they're used to, it seems like. And this was the Narcan I talked about. Uh, you can get it at uh, the fire stations, uh, Chamber of Commerce, no questions asked. And we just tell people it's... Uh, you know, if, if your teenager or someone in your family is, uh, you know, addicted to opioids or people come over, you never know when someone can overdose with fentanyl, what have you, so this will reverse uh, those kinds of things. Uh, tell people to call 911 first, then administer the Narcan. And we also talk about the uh, Good Samaritan Law, where, you know, if there's a party and something's happening, but you can call. 911, there won't be any um, recriminations against you. I mean, law enforcement will come or medical personnel, but they won't prosecute you. We just want to make sure people aren't freaked out, and you know, the best thing to do is call 911. So, those are just some of the messages we have out there. Uh, we work with different groups in town Mayor's Youth Council, uh, Army National Guard, uh, you know, just a lot of different sectors of picture on the 
Laura Wright is from El Pass Red Ribbon Week, and, and we're working on bringing that back uh, next month at the middle school, so we're looking forward to that. So again, I appreciate the opportunity to present and take any questions if you have them. Yeah. So years ago, when you guys first started the coalition, you had text to tip. Do yeah. you guys still have that? Well, text to tip uh, had to, to go bye bye just mostly because the sheriff's office with their uh, monitoring program through you know the courts and everything, and because uh, it was an anonymous thing, and, and the sheriff's office had to had to kind of change course on that. It was effective at the time, but there's an app out there called P3 that you can put on your phone and download it and uh, you can report anonymously through through that app. It's just a lot of kids, you know, just aren't into it as much as the text to tip, but uh, there, there still is a way to get anonymous tips to the sheriff's office if you see something, you know, like that, a party in the neighborhood or what have you. So, so yeah. Thank you. Well, just thanks for all you do. You're just such a great presence in our community, and we're lucky to have you. Yeah, well, we appreciate that, and, and again, we appreciate the cooperation of the district. And Dr. Jay coming back, he's always been a big proponent of the coalition, and he's got all the principals on board as well, so we appreciate that. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, We are doing our district celebrations, starting with Fountain Hills High School. Are, are you giving intros, or who do we have coming up, Dr. Uh, we have site leadership here awesome. to, to do that. I'd like to come down and, and take a picture with each of our winners as well for the Fountain Hills Times. First of all, um, Chris Hartman wanted me to let you know that um, he sadly could not be here because he has COVID, so he's been home all week, and um, I've been holding down the fort. So, <laughs> you are stuck with me for the evening. One-handed. One, yeah. Yes, one-handed <laughs> has been fun, so we can also a little clipping. All right, so right now I'm going to talk about the faculty of the month. So, Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Jeff Bonner is the type of person who does just that. He is a staff member who is here at everything and is willing to do anything for the school, the students, and community. The decisions he makes are centered around our students. He makes sure they have the best possible experience they can while at Fountain Hills. Jeff Bonner bleeds Falcon Blue and forever will. Thank you so much, Bonner. It's about consistency. Consistent hard work leads to success, and their greatness will come. Sammy Hughes is on her way to greatness because she is consistently working hard in the classroom, on the court, and in the field. She is a passionate athlete that competes hard. She takes responsibility to ensure a schoolwork athletic balance. Additionally, she consistently and without hesitation assists her classmates when help is needed. She will even stay after class to do so. She is well respected by her peers and takes pride in being a Falcon. You can see her in the crowd at most events cheering her classmates on. We are lucky to have her flying high showing off the Falcon way. Thank you, Sandy Hughes.
want to also add that we have uh, a great partnership with our PTO, and our PTO has stepped up to help us with this, um, this now uh, regular celebration by uh, giving each of the staff members and students um, a $50 gift card as well. So, uh, Yes, Dr. Bildrick from the middle school. Yes, hello, thank you. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start with our faculty of the month. Um, Mrs. Leanne Reinhold. She is our new, she's new to our school district, and she is also our 7th and 8th grade ELA teacher. She is being nominated and being who she is. You will understand it once you meet her. She does all things wonderful. She is a good listener to all students and her colleagues. Um, I have heard students come to my office when I'm walking around campus. They say, hey, you know that teacher that teaches ELA? She has the most wonderful accent. <laughs> and she's so nice. And I'm like, are you talking about Ms. Reinhold? <laughs> yes, her. And I'm like, she is really nice. And all that I have said, and, and the students have talked about her so much, she has been a great addition to our middle school program uh, for those students working in her class. I know that when talking with uh, Ms. Leanne Reinhold as she was beginning her um, venture with us and, and getting her class ready, she was so nervous that look at her now. <laughs> um, so I'm very excited that Every time I walk into her classroom or I pass by, I always make sure to walk in. Everyone's having fun, they're engaged, and I just love it because I see that her students are enjoying being in her class. I have students who are asking constantly to the counselors, I want to be in her class. I want to be in her class now. And so with that, she has embraced all things um, with our initiatives in our school. Um, she definitely deserves this recognition. Couldn't have been a doppelganger, I don't know. <laughs> sure. Uh, 
sure looked like him, though. Um, all kidding aside, so uh, the first uh, award or uh, recognition I'd like to give out is to the Faculty of the Month. And McDonald Mountain is extremely blessed to have Jillian Levin um, on our kindergarten team. Uh, first year teacher, and you would not know that by walking in her classroom. Uh, she has done everything um, this year to start the year. As you walk into her room, she has uh, been a master at everything that she's been doing. As you walk into her room, you can feel the learning environment is palpable how much she cares and how kind she is to the kids and how kind they are in return to each other. Uh, that goes a long way with how uh, students treat each other as, as they're treated by their, their adult or their teacher in the room. Um, she has been a tremendous help to the kindergarten team and again, she's been a tremendous asset to that team as well because there's two new teachers including her and then a veteran teacher but she has been phenomenal in helping with, with getting everybody on board. Um, if I was going to give one compliment to, to Jillian, it would be, uh, and I think for those of you who have coached before, uh, some people just have a natural talent for what they do. Uh, and if you're coaching, you know what I'm talking about. And, and that's what Jillian has. She has it when it comes to teaching. It's something you can't coach. It's not something that you can really uh, give to somebody else. It's something that just comes naturally. Uh, I think we all have seen people in our life who are just naturally good at something and that she is naturally a great educator. So it is with my um, great honor, and um, I did hire her too, so, <laughs> so I don't have stipends available for that. But, um, all kidding aside, I'm very, very blessed and very proud uh, to call Jillian Levin a McDonald Mountain educator. So Jillian Levin. So for my next recognition, it's for the student at McDowell Mount Elementary. I'm going to read to you what her uh, teacher, Ms. DeRosa, wrote. Um, and our nominee is Ruth. And I'm going to butcher the last name. How do you say it? Catalog. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. But um, so I'll read you exactly verbatim what what Miss DeRosa wrote. Ruth is a stellar student who loves to help all of her friends in the classroom. She loves to show kindness and help those that need extra help with their work. She always follows the rules and encourages others to do the same. Our class loves having Ruth as a spectacular friend. She is one of the the brightest spots of my day, Miss DeRosa. So. I see Ruth a lot in the cafeteria because that's where I'm doing supervision. And I can honestly say, and this is God's honest truth, 100% of the time she's always doing the right thing. I've never had to tell her to sit down. I've never had to tell her to raise her hand to, to get up. She always waits for me to dismiss or another adult to dismiss their table to throw their garbage away. Um, whoever raised her, <laughs> you, you've done a phenomenal job. So you should be very proud of her. She is. Most of the time, kindergarten is like herding cats, and Ruth is definitely, and I can, I can, um, I can relate to Mr. Rose's comment. She is a bright spot every single day. She's in our building. So congratulations to Ruth. Thank the governor board and Dr. Jay for having me here for uh, this inaugural evening of celebration. 
uh, for Falcon of the Month. Um, I, I think that uh, everybody, I know almost everybody, except for Ruth, that got awards. Uh, <laughs> um, the reason I don't know who Ruth is is because she's never been in trouble in the bus. Or <laughs> so that's a good thing, Ruth. Um, but everybody else that won tonight, congratulations, are all uh, well deserving of the award. Uh, the person I've chosen tonight uh, to receive the award is from the Transportation Department. Um, most people don't recognize that uh, most of my staff is up around 4.30 in the morning and they begin uh, either filling their buses or pre-tripping their buses around 5.30 in the morning and then are en route at, uh, between 6.20 and 6.35 uh, every day. Um, that is a miserable existence first thing in the morning. I tell you that, you know, flat out. Um, but this driver comes to work every day with a positive attitude and a smile on her face. Um, she is also a mentor to me in some ways because she shoots me straight. Um, she is one of the few drivers that, that will come up and, and tell me exactly what she's thinking, um, whether it's a safety issue or, or my behavior. She tells me what she's thinking, and I appreciate that, and, and I, I, uh, I welcome her, uh, her comments. There's an adage uh, in the school business that says the uh, first adult that most students see at the beginning of the day or the end of the day is a bus driver. Um, the one thing that all of my drivers are, 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 are encouraged to do is always have a smile on their face despite uh, what a bad day they're having. Make sure they're welcoming to the uh, students, even the high school students who 100% do not respond when uh, <laughs> um, uh, to, to at least acknowledge the kids uh, when they get on, remind them to have a good day when they get off the bus, and uh, remind them to have a good night when they get off the bus at the end of the day. Um, this driver does an exceptional job of knowing all of her students, where they belong, parents who need to be there, adult, older siblings that need to be there. Um, she is really an exceptional driver in, in every sense of the word. Um, she brings to me, the thing that, the, the reason I chose her is because she is the one driver uh, that is always on top of students and their moods. And the number of kids that, that she's been able to intervene um, just because she's recognized that things are off is just incredible. Um, so it's my honor and my privilege to uh, give this award to Joey Luff, my colleague and my friend. National His Hispanic Recognition Program. More specifically, she is one of 62,000 high school students from around the country being recognized for excelling in her PSATs, her AP exams, and her classwork. But more impressively, she qualified for her academic honor by scoring within 90%, the 90th percentile for her PSAT scores. That's 90th percentile nationally. That means only 10% of the students taking the test did better than she did. That is one heck of a feat. And Maya Angelou said it best, all great achievements require time. And Annalise has devoted her time in order to reach her goals. And she will continue to soar high far beyond her time here in Capitol Hills. So congratulations, Annalise and Laura Lucas.
everybody. Those are wonderful recognitions and celebrations. Um, we're going to move on, <coughs> excuse me, to the rest of our business meeting. Anybody who wants to stay and see everything that we do as a board, you are welcome to. But if you'd like to go home and enjoy the rest of your evening, we won't be offended. <laughs> of audit contract that's on page 18 and 19 site council minutes uh, we have McDowell Mountain site council minutes on pages 20 to 22 and then we have the current enrollment and withdrawal report which is on pages 23 through 26 any questions comments discussion on these items no okay I'll make oh go ahead do you have a comment I do I was just gonna make a comment on the enrollment um, um, I always appreciate the enrollment report. I follow it very closely. Um, I'm kind of a data nerd, so over the years, as I just told Dr. J today, I follow cohorts. And so I was really impressed to actually see that, you know, we're currently over, you know, 1,200 students. And, and I know there's a lot of um, numbers that get thrown around, what our projected could be at 2030, what could happen next year, blah, blah, blah. But, we have to focus on the now, and, and I'm really impressed to see that our numbers have actually stayed steady, and we're actually higher than what we projected, so it just shows how off projections can be. So I just would like to thank Krista for putting that together, and all the registrars for being accurate in their information. I like to see where students are going. Mm -hmm. I like to see where they came from. I appreciate that the reports are, are getting cleaner, and the data is more accurate, and, um, and I look forward to those future numbers continuing to go up. So thank you for everybody and their hard work. Definitely. Thank you. And if I could just share about site council minutes, uh, McDowell Mountain is the only school that has had their first meeting, and the other two will have them within the next week or two. So you'll see all of them beginning October. Yeah. October thank you for that additional context. Okay, we move on to public comment, and we do have one public comment here. Uh, let me go ahead. I'll read the statement. Call to the public. This is the time for the public to comment. Time limits may be allocated on public comment at the discretion of the board president for the board to efficiently complete its business. The board reserves the right to prohibit any comments made in a discourteous or threatening manner. Complaints about specific individuals, students, or personnel are discouraged. Personnel issues should be directed to the appropriate staff member or administrator per district policy. Members of the board may not discuss items that are not specifically identified on the agenda. Therefore, pursuant to ARS 38-431.01H, action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter, responding to any criticism, or scheduling the matter for further consideration and decision at a later date. And with that, we will call you up, Madison. Good evening. Good evening. First, I wanted to thank you guys so much for a lot of the things that have been going on. I think that the change in the atmosphere has been palpable, I and mean, you see it on campus, you see it at the events. Um, Coffee with Kane has been an excellent um, event, and there's been suggestions from and questions from community members. A lot of involvement, like you said, the turnout's been great. I think that's awesome. Um, I love the Student Advisory Board, I love the Stakeholder Feedback Committee, I love the celebration of excellence that happened tonight, I think that that's awesome. I think these are wonderful opportunities to gain insight as well as um, improve and establish community, uh, community trust. I'm also really happy to hear Kane encourage our community to brainstorm opportunities to reboost our district and bring our kids back to their home district, I think that that's 
That's awesome. Um, I think we've made progress and moved things in the right direction. So I'd like to encourage some careful thought about the ASPA policy wording in the package, in the board packet on page uh, 121 and especially 122, where it changes encourage to the word may uh, for parents visiting the schools. Um, I know it may seem insignificant, but if that's the case, then I suggest we leave it as is. I think we want to actively encourage family and community involvement. Not only do studies continue to show that students who are supported in their education at home outperform those who are not, but when the community is involved, I think they become personally tied to the success of the district and our students, as well as encouraging involvement will cultivate a shared responsibility and improve Falcon Pride as we continue to improve. Thank you. Thank you. Following public comment, we now have the consent agenda. The consent agenda consists of the personnel action report on pages 28 through 29. Payroll vouchers are pages 30 through 37. Accounts payable vouchers 38 through 60. Donations on page 61 and 62. And that is the end of the consent agenda. Are there any questions or comments about any of the consent agenda items? All right, I'm going to go ahead and move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. You have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion carries. On to action items. Beginning with the cross-country out-of-state trip that is in our board packet on pages 63 through 66. And I understand we have our cross-country coach with us this evening to give us information. Do you have any additional background for us, Dr. J? I will defer to coach. Come on up, coach. Come on up. All right, cool. I don't know if that was the case or not, but I'm happy to talk all about it. Um, and I'll also use this platform to uh, really I emphasize how awesome uh, this past Saturday was and the people that were in this room when they were out there volunteering. Um, Kim was on the lead cart, Jenny was in the finish line watching her daughter run, Bonner was out there parking buses, I mean there were just people <laughs> everywhere. So it was a great event. Um, and the cool thing about that event is that we raised quite a bit of funds. Um, we had 96 teams there, they all paid an entry fee to get in and so um, there are costs associated with putting on a meet with uh, police involvement and Anyways, I can get another huge budget. Mary, 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 just get a really good budget report for us. But we end up on the end of black. And so um, uh, we are uh, trying to bring back a tradition where the team would put on the event and then it would take a Southern California road trip to include Disneyland in that road trip. And so um, our goal is to bring that back, and that's to go to the uh, Mount Sac Invitational. It is the largest in the nation. Um, it's actually four times the size of ours, a little over 430 schools, 12,000 kids, a race every 10 minutes for two days straight. Um, it's really cool, and I would love for our kids to experience that. Um, they heard about it, someone on this trip, they're, they're freshmen, and obviously the COVID got taken away, and so really want to bring that back. Um, it is on, we'd be racing on Friday, October 21st, which would mean leaving on Thursday, Disneyland Saturday, and then Sunday returning. Um, happy to provide any additional detail you guys need, but hoping with those funds, we uh, looking to use those funds to raise to uh, have our kids experience something like that would be really cool. I see. You know, yeah. Like, well, yeah. No, I, again, my broken record. I see that the cost for student is unknown, and I would just, um, I'm so happy that you all raised money, and I would encourage you sure. making sure that all students go regardless of whether they can pay, that, the, you know, making sure that we use community funds or some type of fundraisers so that students who may not have the funds to attend if you can't cover the costs okay. they would be they would be covered so okay um we certainly wouldn't want a student who can't afford to go not be able to Agreed. so Agreed. Our, our goal is to cover that with the yeah. Yeah. yes in that case it does happen uh, yeah put out a plea yes. do Start whatever you need to do if there is any any student who may suggest that they don't have okay. that money we don't because um, it is a great opportunity and thank yeah. you for bringing that yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Um, I agree with Dr. Barnard and tax credit. I mean, there's tax credit money that I'm sure that can go if students really can't pay. So, um, but my other comment is that um, since this is an overnight trip, we have no behavioral form associated with your packet. Um, there's a behavioral form. 
did you have your students fill that out, or will you have your students fill that out? I can't. Are you aware that students are you aware? Not, not aware of the process at all. Let's, so, let's uh, fill them in. Just, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, so this goes yeah. back to the eighth grade. No. Yeah. There's, there's a behavior <laughs> agreement that um, that needs to be included with all overnight trips. Okay. Uh, so please make sure that that. I is, do have a packet for each kid to yeah. fill that. Make sure that's in there. Ten pages long. Yeah. Make sure it's in there. Yeah. And then a lot of that is not. Yeah. Maybe my fault. Honestly, I think the packets are huge. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, Just no. please make sure yeah. because okay. we, we implemented that a few years ago and we want to make sure that that gets filled out and that it's consistent with all of our yes. okay. If someone's naughty, they need to get their own transportation. Yeah. Well, right. like, we're is, not paying to send them back, but they're paying. Uh, like, okay. Is there a deadline on that being submitted? We could do it ASAP, but is it? Just make well, sure it gets done. It doesn't we'll, have to come we'll back to you the with, with, uh, with Evelyn. And Cool. Moving forward, just to make sure that in the future we bring those two that that's included. So yeah, we just like to see that it's what goes out to the families, so that there is no later like, whoops, sorry, we forgot to give you this, or yeah, I'm sure we'll be fine. It's cross country team. Um, <laughs> however, yeah, we'll, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll just be okay. aware of it. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. All right. Any so, any additional questions or commentary on this action item? I will go ahead and move that the board approve the Fountain Hills High School cross country teams trip to Walnut, California on October 20th through October 23rd, 2022. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion presented, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you guys so much. The kids and the parents would love to go back. Send pictures. Yes, I would go for sure. Wardrobe, please. <laughs> <laughs> back to my agenda page. Our next item, 2022-2023 board goals in our packet. Um, we have all of the same goals plus one new one. Um, I know Krista shared those out via email. I don't think that she got any uh, edits back, but before we go ahead and move to approve those, are there any requested edits to any of the wording uh, to the goals? that I appreciate, Ms. Jenkins, that you uh, put one in regarding retention of students, families, and staff, and I appreciate you wordsmithing that and creating it. Yeah, absolutely, not a problem. All right, do we have a motion? I move that, oops, I move that the board approve the board goals for 2022 to 2023 school year. And I will second, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the board goals, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? We have passed the board goals for 2022-2023. Thank you, everyone. Back to the agenda, our next action item. Bel Air Mechanical purchases over 100,000. Uh, we do have some board background information in our packet, but Dr. J, do you have anything additional to share with us on this particular item? Madam President, members of the board, I guess I would just share that you know, we are experiencing some you know, air conditioning issues throughout the sites, as, as it's well known that our, our buildings um, have some significant maintenance needs, and unfortunately with the heat and the age of some of those, uh, we've had to already uh, expend quite a bit of money to keep our students and our teachers comfortable. And, and for me, it's really important that, especially our new teachers coming in, that their classroom works properly and that they are off to a good start. Whenever you have to move, obviously, it really disrupts the, the learning. So um, I have told uh, Mr. Flynn to do everything we can to, to make sure that we have air conditioning and that um, we, uh, to get those fixed as soon as possible. But with that, uh, as, as we are approaching uh, more and more expenditures, we want to make sure that we brought that to you that there is a, a chance, a good chance, that we would exceed 100,000 for this year with, with our air conditioning. So we do recommend it. And I appreciate all of the historical context about how much we have spent in the last number of years. And we can see that there are some years that have been higher and lower. And that's just the nature of sometimes you fix something and it stays fixed for a little bit longer. And sometimes it doesn't. And some years are hotter and some years aren't as hot. And um, that's kind of the way it goes. Um, any other questions or comments on this item? Uh, I agree. Uh, parts are higher right now, too, so that, that contributes to, 
to it. But um, I just want to say thank you very much because procurement has been a focus for me um, over the past year, and, and we got dinged on our audit for it. And <clears throat> for anyone who's not aware, anything over $100,000 has to go through a procurement process. So I really appreciate that that was taken to heart and, and that this was brought in, you know, to our attention in advance as opposed to after that. Absolutely. Yeah, I have two comments. One is it looks like there's been quite a bit of money expended at our Four Peaks building um, where people are leasing it. Um, so just something to keep in mind as we're considering yes. um, and making sure that um, this is public information that it cost $14,085.49 to repair, um, replace and repair two units um, at Four Peaks for one specific tenant. Um, that money adds up. Um, actually, for another one as well, uh, repairs at $3,668. Um, not that I'm suggesting anything, but just keeping that in mind. Uh, my other comment would be um, the water fountains being replaced with water bottle filler stations. Um, I am pretty sure. Yeah. yeah, I think that one of the classes donated their money toward that effort. So I just we might want to look into that. And I think because I know sometimes when we get those the budget request, it shows that graduating years still have money in their accounts. And I'm wondering if any of that money should be specifically allocated to those water stations. It's, it's a significant amount of money to have those um, instead of just sitting out there all by itself. It may have been one of the senior gifts. Yeah, it was a senior course. gift. Thank you. That's yeah. those. So, the money that you're looking at is it for the actual fillers or is it for the labor to install them into the three? Um, um, it, we had one guy in the office putting one in for us, and he was there for, I want to say, like two days. Three. Yeah, this says replace four existing water fountains with water. So it doesn't tell us if it's earlier. Okay. It, but I'm just, I mean, things like that, like a thousand, a couple thousand here, a couple there. I mean, those are things that rather than have it in a... That doesn't in negate the fact that for the PO, we have to... If yeah. we're going to open up the PO for a larger dollar amount, right? But yes. I think it's a good point that there might be, um, we want to make sure that we're putting all of the expenditures in the correct buckets and that if we have money from one bucket to, to cover something, that we use that funding instead of just all of it coming out of capital or no. I mean, not that it's, not that it will make any dent in this, <laughs> yeah, but I also, no, I right. think that we just think, conscientious because we have three years, you know, money that can get reallocated after a certain amount of years and because of COVID we have money in a lot of random random, random accounts amounts. that we should probably, in the best interest of uh, people who do the accounting, try to spend some of that money out. So it's just an observation more than anything else. We'll, we'll have our finance team look at past uh, senior gift donations and make sure it's, it's uh, you know, spent properly. Yeah, and I want to say it was like either the class of 2020 or 2021 because it was during COVID. The, it was yeah. doing it during COVID that they thought that would be. And that was pretty common among most schools exactly. to switch to all the filler. So yeah. we will we'll get an answer for you. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? I will go ahead and move that we approve for uh, Bel Air Mechanical Inc. purchases to exceed one hundred thousand dollars based on. Um, the spending trajectory that we have for the school year at the moment. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? That motion passes. We move to ESI Inc. purchases over $100,000. Uh, president, members of the board and guests, uh, this again goes back to our substitute uh, teacher um, as a collaboration with ESI. Uh, we've presented in the past some historical data to show you that uh, depending on the year, uh, what those costs can exceed. We are in the process right now of doing a, a data study on that and for a future work study session to bring to you additional opportunities. Kaylee and Alicia are working 
on gathering more data and looking at other options that we have for the future. But for this year, we are in, in a contract with them, and we do expect that, um, again, uh, throughout the year that uh, we will exceed, most likely, um, 100000 And I mean, the cost of human capital continues to increase, so um, that's, that's not too surprising, even if we try to uh, reduce the headcount of substitutes that we need, the cost per resource just goes up. So, any other questions or comments on this one? Okay, I will go ahead and also move that we approve for ESI Inc. purchases to exceed $100,000 for the school year. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? There is not, and that motion carries. We then move to the organizational chart. Madam President, members of the board and guests, um, we've left most of the organizational chart uh, the way it has been in the past. Uh, just a few small changes. Uh, right now we did leave business services, even though we are, are working um, with a consulting group at this time. Uh, we did leave that in place as we do plan to, to move and, and hire somebody uh, throughout this school year. Uh, we also uh, have, I think one other small change could be that we moved to IT under uh, Mr. Alexander's uh, guidance as he has been instrumental in bringing in the fruit group and, and is our uh, liaison between the school district and, and them. Uh, but outside of that, everything else uh, is pretty much the same. We have not eliminated any positions or added any positions at this time. And if you have any further questions, I can answer them. Any questions or comments? I just want, I did specifically ask Dr. Jay that, making sure that we did not eliminate positions with the wave of the wand looking at an organizational chart. And he assured me that we did not. So thank you. Yes. I appreciate that. Definitely. Do we have a motion? I move that the board approve the revision to the organizational chart for the 2022 to 2023 school year. Second. With that second, we'll go ahead and vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. We have then daily and long-term sub-pay increase in our packet on pages 92 through 94. Madam uh, President, members of the board and guests, I'm excited to bring this to you today as, um, as we know, uh, substitute teachers are so important to the success of a school district. And I think a lot of, a lot of people realize that the last couple of years when, uh, when we went through a very uh, tough pandemic. Uh, in Bound Hills, we have not seen an increase in sub pay in a while. And that was brought to my attention early when I began. And it was something that um, I believe that is, is needed. We uh, want to attract the, the most highly qualified and best substitute teachers out to Fountain Hills, and hopefully they will want to stay here and take a position, but uh, if they're here for a day or they're here for the long term, we want to make sure that we were compensating them at a level where they will choose Fountain Hills uh, over the other options that they may have. So we are uh, recommending that uh, we move our short-term daily sub rate to $135 a day, which will also have an impact in a positive way for our uh, most veteran staff as they retire and they, they get to their payout. Uh, this will, will increase that check at the end of their career, which is great for our teachers who have been with us for a long time. And for long-term subs, uh, we'd be moving it to $160 a day, which does not exceed what a first-year teacher would make in our district, but is, is a lot more competitive. And with long-term subbing comes a lot of additional duties like planning, calling parents, uh, going to faculty meetings, and things of that nature. So we wanted to make sure that we're compensating people uh, accordingly. So I do recommend approval. And thank you for the um, sub-pay comparable information across Scottsdale, Mesa, Paradise Valley, Cave Creek, and Chandler. Um, I'm sure Kaylee and or Alicia pulled that together, so thank you for um, them getting us that information because it does help us make a more informed decision about, well, what does that mean in the area? You know, it's great for us to say we're going we're gonna to provide this new rate, but is that truly competitive? Is that still way below other districts? Is that, you know, 
far higher than peer districts, so having that context helps us a lot. Can I ask one clarifying question? What, when does a, subst a substitute become a long-term substitute? How many days is that? Well, it's more just that when we have an empty position and we're trying to hire for that position, then we would offer them more of a long-term contract and saying, for example, we could not fill a position to start the year, so um, we put a, a sub in that position because they're going to be there for a longer period of time and there's additional tasks, then we go ahead and move them to the other rate. Versus, I'm going to be out for a short time and I'm, I'm not making a commitment beyond just a couple of days. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. So we have a couple long-term subs right now. Will this take effect immediately for them? Will it be back pay? Like, how does that work? In three minutes, it'll take my. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it will. It will be moving forward. Okay, it'll okay. be moving forward from today on, and um, like I said, there's a lot of excitement for this. Uh, and, and as you can see, we are very competitive now uh, with with um, our closest neighbors. We, we will be exceeding them in sub pay, so that will be good for us to to attract the best people out here. Perfect. And Mr. Sir, does sub pay come with any benefits at all? The long-term sub, my understanding from Ms. Brown is that yes, with the long-term sub, they do they can they can qualify for benefits. I will verify and get back to you, but I know we've had that conversation. I've had a lot of conversations with her in the last month, but I do remember with the long-term that she did she did say that. But I will double check. Well, going through ESI, if we do provide sick time. Well, you have to. That's right. why we. That's why we go through ESI. So they do technically get. Well, you're talking about like medical. And yeah. yeah, that's right. I'm looking at the medical side. Yes. Is there any, uh, ASRS. Um, all those other benefits that I, are I, out there. I, re I remember a conversation with her on, on a specific situation with long-term subbing, and that benefits were um, were available to that employee. But I will again double check it to make sure I have it correct. And compare that with um, our neighboring districts as well, because I know some of them just pay a stipend, basically, of whatever that five dollar amount is. But if we can also, uh, you know, we hope we never have to use a long term sub to get full time people, but um, that happens occasionally. And I think if we can bring in some the best of the, the best, best can make because we can share the, the full package that they get. I want to put AR, ARS. In. <laughs> that's a big chunk out of their pay. That's twelve percent, and you have to be in the position for a certain amount of time. But certainly, medical, and like, yeah, you know, right. you know those kind of benefits. I think. And whether we use ESI or not, all substitutes accrue paid time off. Yeah. So we just use ESI because it's a it yeah, it's a nightmare to keep track of. So that's I, I hope you know our human resource comes up with a, a great solution, but. That's why we primarily use yeah. ESI for that because so nobody wants to keep track of substitutes in yeah, their time. That they we owe them point four of a day or right? something. Yeah. You know, ESRS I know you a bunch of money, but uh, if you're retiring, you don't plan on taking state retirement right away. Um, you can continue to build up your fund. So you know, we love to have somebody that you know, maybe retired or just decided to do something else in the back and use the same subject. In their best interest from a retirement standpoint, that's great. And I can share, we, we just did that at the elementary school of music. We uh, we just hired a teacher, and she is a long term, or sorry, long term sub, but very highly successful former principal in various districts and is just doing a great job. So we're excited. This gives us a little bit more opportunity in a, in a time where there's a shortage of teachers to give us a little bit more to, to work with. So that's why we. <laughs> okay, with uh, doesn't look like there's any additional questions or comments, so I will go ahead and move that the board approve the substitute teacher daily rate of pay to be increased for both short and long term positions. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion passes, and moving forward, our short-term substitutes will get 135 a day, and the long-term substitutes will get 160 a day. Which is really only like 16 
I mean, it does, but when you break it into an hourly pay, no. Uh, okay, then we have our last action item, approval of board appointed advisory committee to consider consolidation of sites. This is on pages 95 through 97 and should look fairly similar to the one that we approved earlier this calendar year. Um, as was discussed in a previous board meeting, um, we still have a lot to consider as a district regarding um, consolidation of sites and also um, use of our facilities across the district. So then um, this will be um, a renewal of that committee with potentially different membership um, based on people's availability to help provide some uh, advisement to the board on all of these items that need to be reviewed and considered. Madam President, members of the board and guests, we are excited to bring this committee back. We are going to honor all the members that were a part of that in the past, but also offer additional uh, opportunities for people to serve on that committee. Uh, we are really looking for as many ideas as we can uh, to be able to say that we've done everything, we've looked at every angle, and we've vetted it um, you know, the way it should be done. And as I've shared with the community in a recent letter that we are um, going to uh, move any, any conversation of consolidation back a little bit as we continue. Uh, it's obviously your decision of, of what we do, but at this time, we just feel there's more information that needs to be addressed, and, and, and with timelines, we want to make sure when we do something and we tell our community we're going to do it, that we do it at the highest level, and that we are ready on day one to, to have kids on a campus, and I think we just need a little bit more time and uh, a little bit more opportunity to look at all the different options that we do have in, in our wonderful district, so. Agreed. Um, questions? Yes, Mr. Sir. And just note that this is a board appointed committee, so there'll be public uh, posting yep. out of the meeting. And meeting minutes available, yes, exactly. Um, saying that we did have, um, Mrs. Reed was kind enough to uh, be involved as a essentially board delegate on the committee to be a board representative there. Um, do we have anybody interested in serving in that capacity on this particular advisory committee? And I look at the two of you. <laughs> Jill, now yes. that you're remodeling, you're going to have so many insights. <laughs> I'm fine doing it unless you want to do it. Yeah, I'm fine doing it. I would appreciate it, appreciate it um, especially considering that the advisory committee will likely span into the next calendar year, and, and Dr. Barnard and I won't be here next calendar year, so. <laughs> Any additional questions or comments on this item before we uh, make a motion? Hearing none, I will go ahead and move that the governing board uh, create a advisory committee. Let me see, I'm looking at the wording. I guess we will direct administration to create an advisory committee to consider and make recommendations for site consolidation and future use of all district buildings. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the creation of the advisory committee, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? There is not. That motion carries. Those are the, that was the last of the action items. We do move on to information and discussion items and get into the policy advisories. The policy advisory numbers are um, 716, I'm frowning because it's like interesting the way this is broken up, 716 comma and then 717 through 736. I'm not sure why isn't it, it isn't just 716 through 736. <laughs> But anyway, um, those policy advisories begin uh, in our packet on page 99 and extend through page 207. This is a uh, essentially our first reading of the policy advisories, as the board members know, but for those uh, members of the public who are not familiar, we are required to have two readings of the um, policy advisories before they are uh, moved on as an action item. So this is our first reading of these advisories. Okay. So the first policy advisory is 
716, which includes JLDAB referrals to other agencies and the associated regulation and exhibit for referrals to other agencies. Uh, at a high level, this advisory covers or regulation and policy advisory covers. Um, it derives from legislation passed in 2020. The Arizona legislature passed Jake's Law, which creates a fund that provides uninsured and underinsured children access to behavioral health services when they are referred through an educational institution, otherwise known as school-based referrals. Um, the policy must include an opt-in process for parents, a survey to parents whose children utilize school-based referrals, a list of service providers published in the district website, and an annual report to the Arizona Healthcare Cost Containment System. So this is a net new um, policy. Based on legislation. Yeah, based on new legislation. I've, I'm trying to avoid to read. Right. I appreciate that. Yeah, I know. I, I appreciate it. I, I think we, we have a lot of pages here. Yes. Yeah. So a, lot, a lot of it is to post information that's on our website. Yes. Um, which um, we want to make sure, in terms of being compliant, that we have the um, capacity because we have someone who oversees the website who also does a lot of other things. Um, <laughs> But, you know, this isn't, I mean, we, we can't adjust this in any way, shape, or form this legislation. Yeah. Well, it sounds to me like a lot of what they're saying is um, we have to publish all of this information online. Yes. And we, we are able to um, sometimes make some modifications to uh, the regulation and um, the exhibits but we can't usually make uh, substantial changes to the um, policy advisory itself. Because I would have comments about this today, it's so. <laughs> not. <laughs> but this is a law. So this yeah. isn't where we have the ability. A great deal of discretion to change yeah. things. Agreed. So that was the first item. The next um, batch of items, starting with policy advisory 717, um, is JRR student surveys. Uh, and then there's a new regulation, JRR, also associated, it's JRRR, because it's a regulation associated with the student survey. Uh, I'm just going to go through this list at the top, and then we can scroll through and, and get into any additional detail. Um, advisory number 718 is policy KI, the regulation KIR, and exhibit KIE, uh, visitors to schools. Again, um, certain aspects of the policy, uh, we don't change a lot of wording because sometimes that comes directly from legislature, but the regulation is kind of how the school district implements that policy uh, in our own district, and we have a little more um, control and discretion there, as well as the exhibits associated with those. Then we have advisory number 719, policy KB, regulation KBR, and exhibit KBEB, that is parental involvement in education. Policy advisory 720, which is IHAMB and the associated regulation regarding family life education. Advisory 721, which is policy JLCB with the regulation and exhibit regarding immunization of students. Policy 722, which is JLCC communicable infectious diseases. 723, policy GBGCB, staff, health, and safety. 724 is policy DIA regarding the accounting system. Policy advisory 725, which is IHA related to basic instructional program. Advisory 726 is policy JLDA school counselors and psychologists. Policy Advisory 727 for JICFA and the associated exhibit regarding hazing. Policy Advisory 728 is policy IKF, <laughs> <seriously your> graduation <laughs> requirements. I, I do have a question. Yes. Um, I think 
do want to say I think that some of these are very misleading titles. Yes. So I so the one about hazing. When I just read hazing, I'm like, this is not promoting hazing. This no, is, this and is even hazing. even policy seven two five basic instructional program that is a house bill that we have to follow that is establishing a nine eleven education day, um, which doesn't basic instructional program is an odd yes um, way to say that everything else so far except yeah. the hazing one yes I think <laughs> I just want to. I'm just giving you a break. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the 728 policy IKF graduation requirements. 729 uh, new. It's it's like in bold. It's like shiny and fancy. New policy JJIA intramural sports with its uh, policy JIB interscholastic sports paired with it that also has a regulation. Then we have policy advisory 730 which is policy EE for transportation services, advisory 731, policy EEAEA, bus driver requirements, training and responsibilities, advisory 732, policy JF for student admissions, policy advisory 733, policy IJL and regulation IJLR regarding library materials selection and adoption, then there is 734 policy IJNC. It is for resource centers, media centers, and school libraries with new associated regulations and exhibits. Policy advisory 735, which is IMD, school ceremonies and observances. And then policy advisory 736, IMB, teaching about controversial, sensitive issues. So that is the end of the list of policy advisories. Um, I know I read through all of them in the board packet, and I um, know that my fellow board members did the same because they're all very diligent in making sure that we know what we are talking about in the board meeting. Um, again, they aren't really policies that we can say, no, we're just not going to adopt that. Um, so there isn't a lot of discussion um, about them. Uh, I will comment that uh, some of the policies made um, fairly large changes that I think will um, potentially have impacts with how our um, you know staff conduct certain things in the district and um, other ones are just minor wording changes which is like why, why did somebody feel they needed to remove that word I don't know right. but okay <laughs> Yeah. Since we're talking about it, and it came up earlier, um, I, I don't disagree with the comment that was made earlier about that are encouraged as opposed to may. Like, I, I think the, reg yeah, the regulation for visitors to school kind of comes off a little harsh, so I don't disagree with the comment that was made um, earlier. And, and just to reiterate what Nadia said, that's part of the regulation. So as a district, we don't get to change policy. The government tells us what the policy is. We get to make regulations off of that. ASB makes a recommendation, um, basically, to go with your small school district all the way to large school districts. So sometimes it's not a one-size-fits-all, and we can change the regulation and the exhibit, which, again, the exhibit for us, this visitors to school form, is going to be, you know, it's just, we have our own policy. We have a way that people can visit the schools. Um, you know, there's an if, there's an area in it that talks about like it can only be approved by the principal. Well, that just adds a lot of more work to your plate, than yeah. Mr. Wilkinson. <laughs> if you that's what you want to be doing right, all day. If every teacher at parent meeting has to be approved by you, that could be an issue. So for our small district, you know, not all of this is going to fit, but the policy itself has to fit. We don't have a choice. Um, but yeah, so the regulations and uh, and the exhibits are something I think we should probably look at at a work study session. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And I, I think that we also, being a small district, don't have the resources that it might take for some of these requests. So I think right. while we need to adopt these because it's the law, and ASBA has simply taken the law and helped put it into the words of a policy, is that we will need additional language as part of this. So that you know we can't have people coming off the streets visiting classrooms you know we we have to protect our children yeah. like that is our number one goal so and not disrupt 
their learning. So I, I think that some of these, obviously, we have no choice, but we can still create something that is um, customized to our district yeah, we so that we don't have... And the exhibits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If someone wants to come and look at the library books, they can't rip them all out. They have to keep them in the Dewey Decimal System. You know what I mean? Like, I know that sounds silly, but... But it would be a lot of effort are, for the people them. here don't know what you just said. I know. Dewey Decimal <laughs> <laughs> But that, that just showed your age. I mean, we, get, we do get emails from fake people who pretend that they're doing X, Y, and Z. And, you know, we have to, at the end of the day, we have to protect our children. And I don't want um, people to use, potentially use these as ways to, to access our school. Um, we have to protect our kids. And whatever that takes, however, people need to get permission to come into our schools to do these things. I think that needs to take precedence over any of these other things. If they want to look at our library books, they need to yeah, see yeah. that they're old and get us some new ones. And yeah. think all of these things have we've never, ever not allowed. We have a adoption period with books. Our libraries, we would never not let a, a, someone go into our library. Yeah, as mean, long as we make sure that yes. they're... Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I like to look at the regulation. So, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Agree. Exactly. So, um, Krista, if you will please uh, reach out to the board members via email and get some input on which ones we would like to pull into a work study session. And I think we'll want to go ahead and um, adopt any of the policy advisories, but table adoption of regulations or exhibits until the board has had an opportunity to make some um, word changes so that we don't just blanket take everything that ASB Ethic has recommended on those items. And I, and Mr. Buckley, I would like FHEA to look at some of these because they impact teachers directly. Um, and we do not have a librarian. No, we, do. We, do. we do. So I would also, um, the librarian and the aide, to look to review the requirements that are, it's yeah, so without a full-time library media specialist or an equivalent position, there's exemptions based on the level uh, it's on yeah. page 129. Okay. okay. And the if agreement. So, anyway, I would like um, whoever is part of that process to um, look at this and give us. So, they understand the level of effort that would be, they can comment about the level of effort that would be involved if they're asked to pull a student's um, library records and. We can establish what uh, expectation would be for that to get turned around to yeah. a parent. Right? I mean, they obviously Are keep them because um, if you've ever gotten the book is missing, was never returned. But um, you know, just making sure that we don't create something that becomes difficult for teachers and or um, other library. staff members to be able to fulfill. Yeah. Um, would I be able to get a copy of board packet? Yes, it'll be some great bedtime reading for you. <laughs> it's on the website. You can do it tonight. Oh. <laughs> Any other uh, questions or comments? Yes, Dr. Sir. This uh, Dr. Dave, when you went to law conference, uh, any of these uh, address the scripts specifically? Yes, some of them were. Uh, we actually got an email during the conference regarding the 9-11 uh, because it was right there at that time. And so um, we did forward that out to our teachers, or to our, to our principals to, to address. Uh, so yes, yeah, some of them did. There was a lot of different, um, there different sessions. So depending on the session, um, we, you know, they did, they did talk about some of them, yes. And also I'm a part of different groups that also meet, uh, superintendent groups, where we also have an opportunity to discuss those and uh, the moment of silence and those things. We are, we've already implemented a lot of that even prior to uh, the, the date that's coming up. Uh, but there is a few little additional pieces that we'd like to put in place just to make sure we are completely in compliance of that. Uh, but I definitely, I'm on the high school campus that's already been implemented since day one. So some of that we've had conversation on, and I, I do agree, though, that a, a work study session for all of us to take a look at is, is important. And for faculty and staff as well, because they're the ones that are... Yeah, so, yep, so I can train them appropriately.
Yeah, and so I would recommend because the moment of silence does say that parents are informed of that. Um, and so yeah, because they're supposed to talk to their student about correct how well, to utilize that. Which uh, I think is fine, but I think that we might want to um, get that information out to parents so no one is surprised if their kid is okay. home and says, there's two minutes and, and you're supposed to tell me what I'm supposed to think about. Them. Yeah, because people might, people just might not know, so making sure uh, maybe not to add work to people's plates, but I think that we do need to let parents know that this is a law that we are um, doing. Yeah, and I'm, I'm working with um, a couple of the other superintendents. They have some language that they've already created that they're sharing out that we then can take and, and make it our own, but for the most part, it's just a notification of yeah. have a conversation with your yes. child about how, you know, what they can use that time for, you know, versus coming from, from the teacher. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. Then the next item is marketing. Dr. J. Yeah, Madam President, members of the board and guests, uh, this is a, uh, this is, comes from one of the coffee sessions. So we, we talked a lot about ways that we can continue to market our district moving forward. And like I've shared, uh, I really feel that in the next two years, we have an opportunity to reimagine the district and, um, and, and put us in a position to uh, retain our staff and our students, but also hopefully attract some back to us. And the, one of the ways we want to do that is look at uh, opportunities for marketing. So we've started that process. Uh, we may be bringing uh, down the road a, a an opportunity to um, use some funding to maybe bring part-time marketing group in to help us. In the past, we've been able to work with local companies, which we will still explore that as well. I was part of that with Dr. Sweeney back in 2017 uh, when we did our last marketing campaign and we rebranded the district. So uh, we're, we're, just, we're just starting that conversation. Just wanted to let you know that we, we listen at these coffee sessions, we do take these things back, and uh, once we have a little bit more of a plan, um, that's where I think the marketing comes out right now. Would that be the time as we're in a little bit of an flux of what we want to do? But once we have a plan and we have renderings and we have um, you know, all the programming set and what the buildings are going to actually look like and what new, new opportunities that we're going to be bringing students, that's when we would do that. So it might be uh, by the end of the year, we're working with a marketing company to help us with that, and then really into the following year, um, additional time with them to, to really get the word out um, about our district. We're also working on uh, more social media. Uh, we've talked about it's, it's a district that um, we, we're going to start most likely with, with an Instagram for each site. We felt like that, looking at all the, the platforms, uh, that that one is, is, is a popular one that, that we could get. Uh, text and images and things out. So each site would have a, a, a account and then the district as well and start to push out a, a little bit more on the social media side, continue our great partnership with Fountain Hills Times, and then also uh, our Falcon Focus and our other communications that we do. But um, I'm also I'm not ready to, to share this yet, but I've got some, I got a, 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 an upcoming meeting with some, some people with the town about some ideas that I have. To, to market our, our town a little bit more and our schools because my vision is for Fountain Hills to be a, a destination where people want to come here because they want to come to school here. And, and as a result of that, um, we, we have a lot, a lot of work to do, but I think we can, we can get there and we just need a little bit of, of, of assistance from a marketing firm down the, down the line. So just letting you know that we're heading in that direction. Yes. Business-wise, marketing is great, but if you don't close the sale, it doesn't do you much good. Now, I really appreciate the fact that this summer we have a focus where you can register your students at one place uh, all summer long. And I think that's a, a good closing element, but I don't think that's enough. I think we have to make sure we do a really good job of defining, okay, I want to come to Bob Hills and my student is really interested in, in this career. What do you have? That kind of That's more of a potentially a sales issue than it is a marketing issue. So having those closers out there is what I call it, those real estate or, or anything else, it is as important as anything you do with marketing. So Absolutely. Yeah. 
That was the last information discussion item. So, future action, if you have an item that you would like to see on a future board agenda, please reach out to Krista. Dates of upcoming meetings, Wednesday, September 28th, 2022, is a work study session here at 5 p.m. And then Wednesday, October 5th, my daughter's birthday. Business meeting at 6 p.m. here in the Learning Center. And with that, I move that we adjourn. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed?